sweet. Makeup. <laughs> what are you doing? Posture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's hard in these stools. All right, Superman chest here. <laughs> Chin out. Hi, I'm Andrew Hudak, product manager at Fictive, and I'm here with Harald Quintus Boss, CTO and co-founder of technology development and engineering firm Cooper Perkins, as well as Anne Torres, uh, VP of engineering at Cooper Perkins. Today we tore down a Dyson Air Multiplier AM06 table fan, focusing on complex injection molding, airflow, and design for assembly features. So this is a, the impeller out of the fan, and it's a mixed flow impel, impeller. Uh, flow comes in from here on the front axially and then leaves centrifugally on, these, uh, uh, on the upper out here on its way to being uh, pumped into the Coanda effect ring. Um, what's interesting about this fan is, of course, that it has uh, a very complex set of uh, blades, and the blades are not easily moldable, so they're done in separate actions, each one of them. And then the cover is ultrasonically welded on. So it's a, it's a complex assembly designed for high performance and low noise, and one of the features of low noise is the, the trailing edge of these impeller, uh, impeller blades are all uh, scalloped and very, very thin to uh, really uh, diffuse the high pressure to low pressure transition and not create any artifacts that would create noise as the air is leaving the fan. Um, and the last thing that's really cool uh, is that they dynamically balance. So these machining marks over here uh, are evidence that uh, after injection molding and after assembly, they then uh, spun this up in a machine and dynamically balanced it so it wouldn't vibrate the fan when it's running. And that um, removes a little bit of the hum when it's spinning. So that's a very uh, interesting feature of this, uh, this fan. Uh, obviously, uh, more expensive than con conventional injection molded parts. There are quite a lot of features on here and a lot of complexity in this one piece which suggests that the tooling for this was actually quite expensive and had lots of uh, complexity around it. This, these features in here um, had to be molded in this direction, inward, so it's likely that this had a core that imploded so the metal, probably a centerpiece came out and then pieces would be uh, pulled inwards. Uh, in order to make these kinds of features. The, the features on the end, like these features here on the end, um, these features were pulled this way, which is normal because this, uh, this surface was also pulled that way. And on the other side, uh, the other side has even more detail. So these guys would have required actions coming out this way in order to mold things like this. So uh, this is a highly complex part. The tooler would have thought long and hard about how to design this tool. Um, and it's all, it's all so that you can pull it off in one part uh, and add all of those holding, clamping, stamp, uh, snapping features. Uh, the traditional approach of less engineering and less tooling development would have been to probably make this uh, two shells that come together with an internal chassis. Mm -hmm. So the, the more common approach would be I'm going I'm to make a chassis of pl a plastic part and then I'm going to have two cosmetic covers to come around on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to make these holes uh, directed so that they're in, in the line of pull of two halves. Uh, and then you have, you have, so you would have everything. You would have parting lines coming off the side, and this part would be more cosmetic, and there'd be an internal structure holding everything together. Um, that would be easier to design and easier to mold. Not as elegant, though. No. So the third aspect of uh, interest in this teardown that we looked at was uh, designed for assembly for hidden fasteners. So in a lot of products you, uh, you can see the uh, evidence of where the fasteners are uh, and that's usually necessary because you have two parts coming together and the fasteners are in one. Uh, so people try and hide those, that's an important aspect of uh, elegant design and in this case what they've done is they've made the fasteners only exposed when the uh, part is moved out of its neutral position. Um, and in the way that they've assembled the stack up of parts, uh, each 
subsequent assembly hides the screws of the previous so when you're finished with the entire assembly there are no exposed fasteners on the outside the only fasteners we saw were facing the table which is pretty nice for an assembly like this for more teardowns and technical engineering deep dives be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel as well as our blog at fictive.com slash blog Oh, good job. Okay. Sweet. All right. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs>